the purpose of this talk is to sort of raise some of those issues and also uh, uh, to flag some of the areas which civil societies can watch out for when, when they come across a uh, e-flows assessment study. The so-called, uh, you know, Baranita was talking about the building block methodology or the holistic methodologies, etc. So there is no doubt, I uh, totally endorse the viewpoints of uh, Dr. Lata, rivers should flow and the right for the river to flow is unquestionable. You know, so there is no pitching of free flowing rivers and e flows. So these are in two entirely different contexts that we are talking about. Wherever possible, critical stretches of rivers should be preserved, it should be left for the river itself. So there is absolutely no doubt about it. Now the question of e flows comes in. If there is a development happening or which has happened, then we should ensure uh, as, as civil society and also a policy maker, we should, you know, I think it's our duty to ensure that ecological needs get the first priority. Dr. Ravi Chopra touched upon this point in the morning. He said that if there is spare water after ecological meet, after meeting the ecological needs, then it should be abstracted for what is. So I think that's the way uh, we should also go for. So assuming that there is some spare water in the river after meeting the ecological needs, then think about abstracting it for whatever purposes you want. Uh, I, I thought, you know, I'll touch upon why do we need to look close, but um, Paranita and uh, Radha has already touched upon it, so I'm just quickly uh, taking you through these slides. One is about the ecological services that the river offers, the aquatic uh, biodiversity um, that the Ganga sustain, sustains in itself, the fluvial geomorphology, uh, the, the, the fertility of the land, the formation of uh, the rivers, etc. is also very important. So flows are important uh, parameters uh, to determine this. And most importantly, the social, cultural, religious aspirations. And I, I'll again quote the experience of um, uh, uh, our work on assessment of e-flows. Uh, when Dr. Ravi Chopra was leading this work on uh, social, cultural uh, aspects of e-flows assessment, he happened to visit Bithur. Bithur is near Kanpur, a little upstream of Kanpur. And there is a Brahma temple there. So he asked the priest there, you know, what do you want the river to be? So they said that once in a year we need a flood, which will wash the feet of the god. And then we consider that it's a river. So that's what we need. So there are different aspirations of people. So we need to sort of uh, upon that. And there is a, you know, it's a fertile land, uh, agrarian economy. Uh, people need, uh, people are dependent on rivers for livelihoods, fishing, several other things. So we cannot just ignore that. E-flows definition, uh, many of you have touched upon, you know, there is nothing new that we are uh, talking about. Um, so the WWS work on e-flows, you know, uh, when we started off with this program on, on uh, Living Ganga, the Living Ganga program in 2007, you know, we are looking at the different issues. You know, normally when you get off into a project, you do a threat analysis and we found that flows is a major issue. And when we looked upon uh, the, the work that has been happening in India, so we uh, happened to see some work initiated by WQA at that time, you know, again based on ad hocism and all. So there was no science to e flows assessment. And that's the uh, time when we thought that, okay, this is something that WWA should start looking at. And also the other advantage was in the WWF global network, there were people who were already starting, uh, who, who, are, who were already working on e-flows. So it was easy to sort of tap their expertise and understanding and sort of improvise it for the Indian context. Um, and you know, when we started off, you know, we we also didn't know, you know, we didn't have internal capacity to understand e-flows. To be frank, and over a period of time, you know, work with a uh, lot of partners, and today we stand here to share some of our experiences only because of our partners, you know, including Dr. Chopra, uh, Professor Nautia, the IIT Kanpur, and several others. Several others have contributed, and that's the reason why we we, we, we feel that we, we have at least started to understand the issue of e flows. Uh, now, uh, we thought there should be something practical that should be worked out for. Uh, the, the Ganga. We started off, but a lot of issues. Um, I, I categorized that into two. One is technical uh, challenges, uh, 200 odd methodologies, which will uh, the Ganga. That was a big question. And how to capture the complex issues of the Ganga, the cultural, spiritual, socio, uh, social aspects of Ganga. It's quite different. So, how do you sort of 
you know, whatever approaches you are talking about, you know, holistic or hydrology based or whatever, how do you bring this into uh, those assessments? And uh, uh, Dr. Chopra and uh, Lata also has uh, flagged this issue. Where is the data? You, know, you don't have data. You have data, but you don't have access to data. So, how, you know, in such a situation, shall we get into some kind of exercise like this? Or, uh, so that those were some of the uh, questions that we were having. Uh, I'm not saying that we have addressed every, everything. You know, data still remains a mystery, but whatever uh, minimal amount of data that we could get, we, we have uh, carried on with that. And uh, you know, again, uh, our, our, our idea was not to suggest a particular value of e flows for the Ganga, but uh, to demonstrate a methodology which, can, which people can use. Uh, in future to sort of assess the people's requirement. The second issue was, okay, even if you were having answers to all the first uh, first set of challenges, where is the capacity? Who will carry out the assessments? You know, within the WWF and uh, uh, outside, as well as who will validate that? So these were things that we uh, worked around. And uh, just to give you a uh, sense of how the EGLOS methodology and assessment evolved, it basically, you know, if you look at all the 200 odd uh, um, methodologies available across the globe, predominantly it is ecology or hydrology based. Uh, Nitin will talk in detail about that. But over a period of time, what has happened is there are different layers that were built in hydrology, ecology, hydraulics, geomorphology, water quality got added in. And some people felt that, okay, humans are important in rivers. The, com the riparian communities are important. Several methodologies exist. BVM is one, one of them. And at the moment, it is stated as one of the holistic methodologies. And time, uh, a time will come when a better methodology will evolve. But uh, at the moment, BVM seems to be good. But you know, we need to sort of be vigilant about the misuse of building block methodology. And that's exactly what uh, Nidhi is going to talk to you about. You know, what is BVM in its real sense? And uh, what are the things that should go into the BBM? Uh, one more important thing which I want to highlight and then I uh, hand over to Nitin is, uh, you know, as a country we have not sort of looked at the cost of not allowing the rivers to flow. Supposingly, you know, uh, uh, we have been hearing about Pinder, Pinder River, okay, and there is some project that's clear. But if Pinder were to be dry, what is the ecological cost of it? And because we say that, okay, the loss of revenue from power generation, we articulate that. Okay, the project has started, X crores of rupees have been invested, so we cannot stop the project. But the river has stopped flowing, you know, for the ten, last 10 years. So what is the ecological impact? What is the social impact of that? I think that's something that we need to sort of uh, look at in the future. And e flows is just one, assessment is one part. And once you assess the e flows, the challenge of implementation happens. Challenge of monitoring it happens. 